Hey guys, what's up? I am Joe from Workbench and I'm just checking in on you. I didn't think I was going to do a crazy intro, but then I remembered Bill Burr has a pretty good one. So this week we're going to talk about time lapses. I had intended to do this in the future. However, I just got back from shooting four days of uh, basically time lapse and hyperlapse. So I have a lot of stuff to work with. So let's, uh, let's take a look. So let's check out my uh, cluttered drive right here. Let's see, I know one starts around here. Okay, so make this a little bigger. All right, so this will be the first shot I'm going to start with. It's a good an example shot because the lighting changes a lot, and that's kind of what I want to show as far as the technique goes. So I know this frame is overexposed a little bit compared to what was going to happen. So I usually go through, and I'll compare them at full size to make sure um, if it's something like this. If I didn't put my hand in the way, this one looks drastically different. So I imagine there's a frame up here. Oh, there we go. So that my hand, I usually put that in or I'll put a slate in if I have time. Um, depending on what's going on, sometimes you can't use a slate. And uh, so this one, I put my hand in there or you can put anything in there. Sometimes you can carry like a, a red handkerchief or something like that. So that it's something that's different in contrast to what you're looking for. So you can easily spot even in these tiny thumbnails kind of like, hey, that's different. Um, I even put a put one here, obviously. So... This looks like it's going to be our first shot. So I'll mark that green and I'll check a couple just to make sure that the movement is about right. Sometimes you can go large. Uh, if you're on an external drive like this one, that is actually a spinning drive. You can usually get between the two. All right. So that's obviously the first two frames of this. These are miscellaneous extras and I will usually lump them into a folder. I haven't done anything else in this folder. So let's make a miscellaneous one. Put that at the top. I don't know why it just started doing that. I love it when it does that. All right. So now I go find my green. So I know that's the beginning of this shot, and that was the last one I shot of, or the only angle of this that I shot. So then I did a hyperlapse of this from the uh, parking garage. So looks like maybe one of these is the last frame. Yeah, that's the first frame of that. There we go. So that's the end frame. I'm gonna mark that with red. And I'll just do that and go the whole way. Or sometimes I'll just do this as I go along, but there we go. Select them all. New folder with selection. It used to let you just type it. I don't know why it doesn't do that anymore. I don't know what's the deal with that. But anyway, it's the Orlando I. I'm gonna call that uh, 01. I call the other one HL because it's a hyperlapse instead of a time lapse. But anyway, and then I have a uh, little thing for you guys to use. It's called sequence rename. That's a service basically that goes into this menu here and you just right click and hit sequence rename. And what that is going to do is going to take this name and apply it with a four digit number at the end so that it has all your frames in order. And so that when you bring this into After Effects, it'll take this part and use it to name your uh, your sequence when you bring them all in. In most cases, when I'm shooting just a single time lapse or just something I saw or whatever, I'll, I'll use After Effects as camera raw and porter only. Um, but on difficult shots like this, where maybe the first frame isn't exactly what you'd want to match because this is a dark frame, but it's that way because I knew it was going to get a lot brighter. And... Uh, Maybe I want to split the difference. I'm probably still going to brighten it up a little bit because it's not as bright as it was when I first shot it in my example frames. But as you can see, it changes a little over time. I still want to maintain the look of the clouds passing over and changing the lighting, but I can't use After Effects as importer in this case directly because the first frame doesn't match what I want it all to look like. If the first frame is indicative of how you kind of want to change everything, then you can make adjustments based on that, or you can go and then open it back up and adjust it later down the line. But if you're going to do a bunch of shots, it's easier just to do this straight up in Lightroom. So let's do that. I already have it open and we're going to add a folder. And I'm going to go to, that was day two. Scroll down because these all start with two. Uh, this was somebody else's camera. I start mine with like YDP for Yellow Dog Party just so that it, it ends up at the end. So all your folders go to the top unless you have something that you name with Y or Z. I'm going to choose that and import all of them. So I don't even need to wait for that to happen. Okay, so we're going to mark in this case the 
probably the first one here because it is kind of indicative of it. Hit one just to make a, a star on it. And then I'm going to go try to find a bright frame. Looks like the sun was probably maximum up in here somewhere. So I'm going to mark one of those two. Then I'm going to set this filter over here to rated. And it's just going to show me those two. Then we're going to go into the develop menu. And then we'll make our adjustments. I'm going to actually bring up the exposure a little bit. Um, I usually bring up the highlights just a smidge. Makes the clouds look pretty nice. Uh, shadows, in this case, I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Blacks, I'm going to raise those a little bit. It looks better in a time lapse, I think, to just have it a little bit less contrasted. It's a little more cinematic if you do it that way, too, I think. Bring the clarity up a little bit. Um, because of the way this is going to look, I'm going to bring up the vibrance and saturation. Maybe not that much, though. These are going to be handed off to somebody else, so I'm going to let them uh, do their final color correction on it uh, without baking too much into it. All right, so this shot is corrected the way I want it right now. I am going to copy the develop settings. I have pretty much everything set. And then we're going to go over here and click on that and do develop settings, paste settings. It'll brighten up. All right, so as we can see, this got a little too bright, I think. So I'm going to bring the exposure down just a little bit. Bring the highlights down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to change the temp, make it a little bit warmer. All right, and then I'm going to basically go back and forth between these two. So now we're going to go develop settings, copy settings, click on copy. Click over here, develop settings, paste settings. I did kind of that temperature adjustment because I knew this one needed a little bit more yellow. Seems like we've dropped the exposure just a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Uh, this was really dark in between, so i got to keep that in mind. Copy those settings one more time. And paste. And I think that's acceptable. This is still pretty bright, but it was in full sun. So between these two, Think is where it needs to be. So what we're going to do is go back to library and right, go up here. I'm going to hit command S and that's going to save metadata to the files. So what that's going to do is back in here, we're going to get an XMP file for this. I'm just going to get one down here. Actually, this one we didn't need to save. We don't need that because it's exactly the same. And what we want it on is our first frame. If that was the one that you wanted to use, say you didn't go back and make the adjustments back over here, you can actually go and rename that XMP to fit this. So basically you're gonna do that to every one of these that you wanna do, so match your frames, see how they all look as a group. But for our purposes, we're just gonna use this one. So now we're gonna go into After Effects. I'm gonna open this back in here, and I am going to go down here and drag this over. So I'm gonna drag the folder in. I have it set already to come in 24 frames a second. So now you can see all the settings that I made in Lightroom are maintained. Just hit OK, and it'll come in. So the reason why I developed sequence rename, um, other than just having easy to read files in here, is that when you drag a whole bunch of these down here, like this, to make a new comp, it'll just name it based on that little piece in the front. So now all of my renders are all clean and simple and I know what they are. So we'll just back out here a little bit, to see what this looks like. Now you can still make adjustments to this. And this is kind of what I was talking about before. If you only had a couple of these, maybe you just wanted to check on a couple of points, you can move down, it takes a bit. It's not as fast as using Lightroom, but you can see, okay, that's how it's going to change. And you can go back over here. So what you can do is open this up over here, click on that, and then you hit command option G. Um, that's also, I think if you go here, you can, uh, it's basically the interpret footage thing here. And to get back to the camera raw importer, you can hit more options and it'll bring it back up. But as you can see, comparing this to that, it is the dark frame because it only does the first frame. So you can make your adjustments here, kind of guessing what you think this will look like and then hit okay and it'll update over here. Once you hit all of that, it'll re-update. See, it's looking again, even though I didn't make any changes. All right, so once I'm done with that, I go and I save my project. And in this case, I'm gonna save it with this whole thing. So I'm gonna name it BH2. TL. I always name it TL knowing what they are so that I can search for TL and find all my time lapses in different places. When I do this for real, I'll actually just split these out into the locations that we shot at. That uh, kind of looks like this. These are ones I shot at the Tampa International Airport and uh, as you can see, I didn't get very creative with the naming, but these are all my sequences and then my renders up in here. So go back to here. 
And I'll save that right in the root here. And then add it to my queue, renders, boom, I can just start rendering. As you can see, it's gonna take a bit of time. I usually batch all these together, let it run overnight, because each one takes about 15 to 25 minutes or so, uh, depending on how long you shot. So it could be a while. I'll cut back when we're done. Bring! All right, it is done. Threw it on my desktop real quick so that we can hopefully watch it back in real time. Yep. And there you go, that's my time-lapse workflow. I've shot a lot of time lapses and this is kind of what's uh, evolved from when I first started doing them. So I hope that helps you. I know the sequence rename will because that has just sped things up for me tenfold. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. I am Joe from Workbench. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.